الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وصرواته وسلامه على رسول الله على أفضل خلق الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله ويا معشر المسلمين إن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلنية فإنه رأس الأمر كله الحمد لله الذي بعثنا فينا رسولا من أنفسنا أنفسنا فهو الذي أوضح الطريق وعلم أعلى الرفيق وأنقذ المؤمنين من الحريق الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى has given to this ummah the blessing of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that on يوم القيامة there would be a hundred ranks of people to enter into Jannah and 80 of those ranks would be from his ummah and so it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's made us people of this ummah and one of the greatest one of the greatest afflictions in this age for many people is the fact that the noblest of the ummah and its nobility is directly related to its nisbah, to who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected it to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected this ummah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to His Messenger. And this nisbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what gives this ummah its nobility. And by this ummah's deviation from this nisbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we see the tribulations of this ummah. But one of the great afflictions of our age is those people who actually feel ashamed or embarrassed to be Muslims. Who, who actually feel in front of the kuffar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in His book not to be deluded by their taqallub al kafaru fil bilad. Not to be deluded by the way they uh, trans about in the, in the earth, by the way that they can go where they like and do what they like. Not to be deluded by that. Allah warned us in His book over 1400 years ago, not to be deluded by that. But this ummah and the greatness of this ummah is in the message that this ummah has to impart. First to itself and then to those around it. And the message, unlike other umam, is not connected to a personality. It is not the message of a man or about a man. It is not the message of a, a group's ethnic background, such as the chosen people, because of the lineage of their father. It is not the message of nothingness, it's not the message of the worldly things, of materialism. It's the message of a unique concept. And the concept is nothing less than the absolute unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Muslim is one who is named not after his prophet. Unlike the other religions, Judaism is named after Judah, who was the father of the Jews. Buddhism is named after Buddha, who was, the father, who was the father of that religion. Christianity is named after Christ, who they claim was the Son of God. But Islam is unique in that it does not call to a personality. It does not call to a personality. It calls to a concept. And that concept is La ilaha illallah. And once that concept is imbibed and is inculcated in the human heart, 
then it becomes more than a concept, it becomes a reality by which the human being is able to walk in the earth as Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing less. And yet that La ilaha illallah can never be separated by the fact that it was brought by a human being. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a second part to this message. And that message is Muhammadun Rasulullah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. It is not a call to the personality of the Prophet ﷺ, but it is a recognition that human beings are guided to their Lord through human beings that are chosen by their Lord to guide them. And because they are chosen, because they are Mustafa and Mushtaba, because they are chosen, we are commanded to show them great honor and great respect. To honor them by following them, and to honor them by praising them, and to honor them by carrying their message to others. And so we do not call to the personality of our beloved Prophet ﷺ, but we call to his reality as the greatest slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abdullah wa Rasuluhu. And this is what we call to, because he is the exemplar. وَلَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْزُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا You have in the Messenger of Allah, the greatest example for those who desire their Lord, who hope for their Lord, and who end the last day, the meeting with their Lord, and do much remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in following the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this ummah achieves the highest in human possibility. And in deviating from the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this ummah is humiliated in this world. This is the nature of the contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's a secret in our Prophet. Of all of the ummah, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the closest ummah to my ummah, ashbahu ummatin bi ummati, Bani Israel. The most like and the most resembling of all of the communities to my community is the community of Bani Israel. And we see the greatest resemblance in prophets to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Musa alayhi sallam. Musa alayhi sallam is mentioned more than any other Prophet in the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ is mentioned very few times in the Qur'an. Because his sunnah is where the Prophet ﷺ is discovered. But the Prophet Musa is mentioned more than any other Prophet. If we look at Musa ﷺ, Musa led his people out of the oppression of Fir'aun and took them in to the liberty of being free people of being Ahrar and not Abid, of being Ibadullah and not Ibadul Makhluqat, of being the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the slaves of created things. And so he took them a physical migration from the land of Egypt into the land of Sinai. It was a physical migration. But Bani Israel were not purified from their internal Fir'aun. They took their internal Fir'aun with them. When they left the land of Egypt, they didn't leave Fir'aun behind to drown in the Red Sea. They took Fir'aun with them. And when the Prophet ﷺ told us how much Udiya Musa min qibri bani Israel, how much Musa suffered at the hands of not Fir'aun, at the hands of his own people, because they disobeyed him, because their nafs were impure. Like the olive tree, if you look at the olive tree, which is filled in the land, the, the Ard al-Muqaddasa in Palestine, the land of the Jews, it's filled with the blessed olive tree, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by what teeny was zaytun. But the olive is a bitter fruit, and it needs to be crushed in order for it to have benefit. 
or it needs to be purified by water over a long period of time. And Bani Israel did not go through that purification, they refused it at the hands of their Prophet. And so when they went into the land of Sinai, they were not allowed to go into the Promised Land for a period of 40 years. If you look at our beloved Prophet ﷺ, in 13 years he took some of the most barbaric people that have ever lived, and he transformed them into the most incredible human beings that have ever lived. He purified them from their internal fara'ina, from their internal Abu Lahabs and Abu Jahls, and all of these creatures that are mentioned in the Qur'an, Nimrod and these. Their purification was an internal purification. And by that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory over their outward Fir'auns. Because if the inward Fir'aun is conquered, the outward Fir'aun will disappear by the nature of Allah's creation, by the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَيْفَ مَا تَكُونُ يُوَلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ And this is the power of Islam when it becomes a transformative force by taking on the message of the Messenger. By taking on his message sallallahu alayhi wa and by becoming people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa by becoming Muhammadin in nature and character, then we are transformed and by this transformation we transform the earth that we live on. And by deviating from that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us taste min al-adhab al-adna, dun al-adhab al-akbar. He lets us taste the lesser punishment before the greater punishment it, that perhaps we might find humility, perhaps we might turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is turning to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمْ Allah. If you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you make this claim, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ إِن is a sharqiyya, it's a conditional phrase in the Arabic language. If this is your, if this condition is true, then here is here is the jaza u shart. Here is the reward of the condition. In other words, here is the thing that must be fulfilled in order for the other to be sincere, and that is nothing less than following the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and loving the Messenger of Allah because you cannot follow him if you don't love him. You follow the one you love. Those of the Muslims in this country that are following the kuffar, this is the sign of their love for those people. وَالْعِيَادُ billah. This is the sign of their love. Because the one you love, you imitate. If you look at this culture, it's filled with these icons, these false idols that are set up for people to imitate. Not great people, not people of the past, actors, musicians, مُشَعْوِذِينَ the lowest level of human society in history. If you look historically, and any Arab or anybody from the subcontinent knows this, the lowest people in the Arabian society are musicians and actors. It's not any, there's nothing noble about these uh, professions. And yet in this society they're exalted, and they're, these people are put up as... We have, وَلَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا He's not an actor. He's not pretending. He is the embodiment of the truest teaching that's ever come to humankind. And in following Him, we are liberated. We become عِبَادُ اللَّهِ and أَحْرَارُ للخلق. Like the poet said, كَانَتْ لِأَهْوَاءٌ مُفَرَّقَةٌ فَاسْتَجْمَعَتْ أَهْوَاءِ مُذْرَأَتْ كَالْعَيْنُ فَاسْتَجْمَعَتْ مُذْرَأَتْكَ الْعَيْنُ وَأَهْوَائِي فَصَارَ يَحْسُدُنِي مَنْ كُنْتُ أَحْسُدُهُ وَصِرْتُ مَوْلَى الْوَرَى نُصِرْتَ مَوْلَائِي The poet says, I used to have so many passions that were all uh, diverse. But since my eye came to know you, all of my passions became one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who I used to envy, the people of dunya, began to envy me because I'm content. Because that's what people want. They want happiness. And they won't find it in the dunya. Sara yahsuduni man kuntu ahsuduhu. Wasirtu mawla wara And I became the master of creation. Musirta mawla'i. The day that you became my master. The day that you became my master, I became the master of creation. If you look at the word mawla, 
in the Arabic language. It's from the Adadad. It means a slave and it means a master. By, being mold, by taking Allah as your master, you become the master of creation. So a mawla is a freed slave. The day that Allah becomes your mawlana, the day that Allah becomes our master, that wilaya is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-wala wal-bara. We take wala with Allah and His Messenger, and, and we are disconnected. There is bara, bara'a from the, 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 the other things of this world, the dunya, and all these false doctrines and false teachings. And we become masters of our nafs. And we become master of shaitan. Shaitan no longer uh, leads us astray. Shaitan flees from the mu'min. And we become master of our shahawat. And these things become marakib, they become vehicles that take, Allah, that take the slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The nafs is a markab, but if the, the nafs is a vehicle, but if the vehicle is riding you, you won't go anywhere. You'll only be oppressed in the earth. When the nafs becomes on top of the, of the ruh, then you become uh, fallen to the earth. You can't move anywhere. You're just oppressed and obeyed in the earth. عَلَيْكَ بِالْرُوحِ فَاسْتَكْمِرْ فَضَائِرَهَا فَأَنْتَ بِالْرُوحِ لَا بِالْجَسَدِ إِنْسَانُ Take care of your ruh, your ruh, your spirit, your soul. And, and complete its virtues. Because you are, by the fact that you have a soul, a human being, not by your body. Not by your body. Because the animals will, will overcome you in every situation. In courage, there are more courageous animals than the most courageous of human beings. In food, there's animals that can eat ten times as much as you. All of these things, the rooster will outdo any human being in sexual prowess. And so this is the point. We are not human beings because of animal nature. We're human beings because of spiritual nature. But the spiritual nature is not allowed to emerge in the human being until he purifies it. And the purification is nothing less than a tarbiya, a tariq. You have to follow this path of purification. And the master of the path is the Prophet ﷺ and those rightly guided people that follow the messenger in his sunnah and teach, the mess and teach this sunnah to the people. Because in every age there are people that guide to the path of the Messenger of Allah. And these people are to be honored and elevated and followed. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةَ الْخُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي And we know the four khulafa, but the ulama al-amilun in every age are his khulafa. Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. They're the inheritors of the task of the Prophets. Those people that know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ulama are three types in this ummah. Alimun billahi, according to Ibn Rajab al-Hambari radiallahu anhu. Alimun billahi wa alimun bi ahkami la wa huwa akmaluhum yufidu nafsuhu wa yufidu ghayrahu. A knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a knower of the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to guide us. And that is the one that is the best of all the scholars because he benefits himself by knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearing him. And he benefits his creation, the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by teaching them how to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ahabbukum ila Allahi alladheen yuhabbibun al-nas. إلى الله ويحببون الله إلى الناس قال كيف يحببهم إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى The Prophet وسلم, the best of you and the most beloved to Allah سبحانه وتعالى are those who make the people love Allah سبحانه وتعالى and make Allah سبحانه وتعالى love. How do they make Allah سبحانه وتعالى love the people? And he said by teaching them, by commanding them to good and forbidding them evil and because they obey him Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves them. And this is the best of the ulama. And then the next degree is alimun billahi wa bi ahkamillah. This is the one according to Ibn Rajab al-Hambari who has ma'rifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge in his heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his knowledge of the sharia is limited. 
He knows what he has to do for himself, but he's not a teacher of these ahkam. And this one is a benefit to himself, but he doesn't benefit the people other than by his barakah and his dua for the ummah and for the people. He's rajulun salih. And this is the, any mu'min has the capacity to be this person. Because al-ilmu bis salah, Imam Malik radiallahu anhu said, لَيْسَ الْعِلْمْ كَثْرَةَ riwayat." That real knowledge is not knowing many, many hadiths and knowing all of the Qur'an and these things. وَإِنَّمَا هُوَ نُورٌ يَجْعَلُهُ فِي قَلْبٍ مُؤْمِنٍ But the real knowledge is a light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the hearts of the mu'mineen. And this is the difference between the munafiq. The Prophet said, أَخْوَبُ وَأَخَابُ عَلَى أُمَّتِي مُنَافِقًا فَصِيحًا لِسَانٍ The most dreaded thing that I fear from my ummah is a hypocrite who has an eloquent tongue. وَمَا أَكْثَرَهُمْ فِي هَذِي الْأَيَّامِ so many people like that. And the last one, and this falls into this category, the last type of alim is jahilun bin dahi wa alimun bi ahkamillah. The one who's ignorant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but knows the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kamathri himar and yahmiru asfara, like a donkey carrying books on his back. And he can benefit people, but he's hujja ala nafsihi. He'll destroy himself. Like the Prophet ﷺ said on the Yom Qiyamah that people will come and they'll see somebody going into the hellfire. See some going into the hellfire. And they will say, how are you going into the hellfire? It was by you that we got najat. That we were saved by you teaching us. And he said, I used to command people to do things and I didn't do them. And this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thrusts him into the hellfire. Because he's jahilun billah. He's ignorant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ummah's task is to know Allah. أَوَّلُ وَاجِبٍ عَلَى مَنْ كُلِّفَ مُمَكِّنٍ مِنْ نَذْرٍ أَنْ يَعْرِفَ اللَّهَ وَالرُّسُلُ بِالصِّفَاتِ مِمَّا عَلَيْهِ نَصَبُ الْآيَاتِ The first injunction of this ummah for every mukallif is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know His Messenger in how they have been given to us by the book of Allah and the pure sunnah of the messenger of Allah. That this is the first taklif of this ummah, this is khitab al-rab. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command to this ummah, is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know them, their, their, their messenger. And the messenger of Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, this glorious messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left behind us a sunnah to follow. In the beautiful hadith, the Messenger وسلم, said, Ad-deenu nasiha Deen is nasiha And nasiha is a word in the Arabic language that has different meanings. One of the meanings is to be pure. So we get from it a derived meaning, ikhlas, that deen is sincerity. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدين. They were only commanded to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَهُ الدين. And ibadah is ma'rifa. In the Qur'an, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I only created the jinn and the humans to worship, to do ibadah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, لِيَعْرِفُونَ To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you cannot worship that which you are ignorant of. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الدِّينُ nasiha And nasaha also means to sew a to sew a patch onto to fix a, a torn garment and this is nasiha the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bada al islam gharibam wa sayyud kama bada gharibam fatuba lil ghuraba the deen of islam began a strange and alien thing in mecca and it will return a strange and alien thing fatuba lil ghuraba and they said, who are the strangers, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, الَّذِينَ يُصْلِحُونَ شَرِيعَةِ بَعْدَمَا أَفْسَدَهَا النَّاسِ Those are the ones that rectify my sharia. And that is nasiha, because nasiha means to rectify. Those who rectify my sharia, my way, my path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the people have, have ruined it, have corrupted it, have changed it. They rectify it. وَإِنَّمَا يَحْمِرُ 
The Prophet ﷺ said, they will carry this deen in every generation, those righteous and upright and just people. And they will always be, لا تزهر طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خالفهم ومن خذلهم The Prophet ﷺ said, there will always be a group from my Ummah at Ta'ifah that's on the truth. And Vahirina, they will be manifest on the truth. No one can harm them who goes against them or who forsakes them and turns and leaves them. Hatta taqoma sa'a wa hum ala dharika. And the hour will come and they're like that. And so the Prophet ﷺ said that nasiha is first to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I don't want to look into that, but that's a deep statement. I want to look at the next one. And then he said, an nasihatu li rasulihi. And then they said, Faman ya Rasulullah. And then after that, to who? And he said, to his messenger. And then they asked him. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to his book, and then to the the general Muslims and then to their elect in one riwayah and in another one to the Imams of the Muslims and then to the general Muslims. And in this hadith when he said at Deenu Nasiha and he said to the messenger Ahmed Zarruq radiallahu anhu, the great scholar from North Africa, said that this has three elements. The first one is Fittiba'i Sunnatihi, in following his Sunnah. That, that is Nasiha to the messenger of Allah and this is an integral part of our deen, is following the Sunnah of the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his sunnah has characteristic. There is an outward sunnah, and then there is an inward sunnah. And they are, we cannot relinquish the importance of the outward by emphasizing the inward. Nor can we emphasize the outward while forgetting the inward. One of the ulama of, of Al-Maghrib, when somebody was complaining, because Moroccan ulama are, are I don't want to say notorious, but they're well known for shaving uh, their beard except for a little growth. They just leave a little, according to the, some Maliki Fuqaha, who gave them ijazah to do that. So they leave just a little bit, and in the lahya, in the Arabic language, liha is from the, the lahya, which is the, the jawbone. And so the Maliki Fuqaha said that the lahya is actually just on the jawbone. And so they can shave from the two sides, and leave just on, so that you find ulama in Morocco, they just have along the jawbone. The bare minimum. So one uh, of the younger men, because young people tend to get uh, very um, passionate about certain things, he said, Ya Shaykh, why don't you let your beard grow long? And the Shaykh said, I wish the people of this age, and he's talking about a certain group of people, he said, I wish the people of this age would lengthen their robes, because some people like to wear a short robe. Would, would lengthen their robe, shorten their beards, but shorten their talk and lengthen their prayer. <laughs> In other words, and I'm not saying that that's what they should do, lengthen their robe or shorten their beard. But he was emphasizing a point. If you only emphasize the outward of the sunnah and you forget the inward of the sunnah, then what do you have? That's called nifaq. When your outward manifests something and your inward hides another thing which is different. Now the Prophet ﷺ, his dress is part of his sunnah. But if you look at the Prophet ﷺ's dress, it was unique amongst the Arabs in that he had a, a, a robe from the Romans, from the Europeans. And this is in the Sahih, in Shama'il al-Tarmidhi, that he had a qamis romani He had a Yemeni burda. He had a Habashi shirt. He wore things from different places, but they had certain characteristics. The one is modesty. They were modest clothes. And you look at all the Muslim Ummah, all of the, the, nas the clothes of the indigenous cultures are modest in nature even if they don't appear the same outwardly. And we're not saying everybody should look the same. Like a garden that has many different types of flowers and has many different types of fruits. We, the, uh, the Qur'an says we, we give them from one water with fruits of varying colors and tastes. So the water of the sunnah is one. But what the fruit of it looks different and tastes different, but it's all pleasant.
schools of this age reek of atheism. They reek of atheism. And this means the men and the women, not simply the men, wearing these tight jeans. And jeans level human beings, make them all look like slaves. You wear the, the, the clothes of a factory worker. They level people. That's what they do, make everybody the same. Now we're the same inside. And outwardly we're different. Because the ummah is an ummah that accepts differences, both in rank and in spiritual hierarchy. Outwardly not everybody is wealthy, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see the traces of somebody, of the blessings He gives people on them. So poor people, rich people should not dress as if they're poor. They should show athru ni'mah. Athar. Traces. Not wearing the whole thing like gold and, and silk. No. That's extravagant. Showing the athar, the trace of the ni'mah. Not wearing rags and not wearing... During, Imam Abu Hanifa anhu used to tell the ulama of his age, وَسِعُوا أَكْمَامُكُمْ have big akmam, the, the cuff of the shirt. Make it big to show that you're people of scholarship so that you don't uh, look like everybody else and then people have bad adab with you and they get ithm for it. You see, because if, if, if the alim doesn't distinguish himself, somebody in the souq who has bad manners might say, Ya Ahmaq, or something like that. And he's talking to a man who's carrying the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger. وَمَنْ آذَلِي وَلِيًّا I mean, he shouldn't say that to anybody because the, the street sweeper in Islam might be the wali of Allah. Like the, the black woman that used to sweep the house of the, the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. And when she died, nobody told the Prophet. And then he asked her, كَانَ يَتَفَقَّدُ أَصْحَابُهُ He used to look for them. And he asked, where is that woman that used to sweep? And they said, she died, we buried her. And he said, why didn't you tell me so I could pray on her? Because they didn't see who she was. She's just some old black woman sweeping the masjid. But she was something big with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the Messenger of Allah. And like that Zahir, the great Sahabi from the Badiyah, who used to bring things from the Badiyah and sell them in the Suq. And the Prophet ﷺ one day was commanded by Jibreel. He said he would show him somebody that Allah and His Messenger loved. And so he went out to the Suq. And when he found Zahir, he's selling his thing. He came up from behind him, put his beloved hands on his eyes, and he said, Man yashtari hadha al-abd? Who will buy this slave? This is mizah, because Allah will buy it. Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'min. He doesn't tell lies. Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'min. Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'min. Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'min. That Allah has purchased the believers, and they're the ibad of Allah. So he said, Man yashtari hadha al-abd? And he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will buy him. And he said, إِذَا تَرَانِ كَاسِدًا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Because he smelt the, the, the scent of the Prophet's cuff, which was like misk. If the Prophet ﷺ touched a boy, they used to smell the flavor of scent on that boy for the rest of the day. And I know an Englishman, a, a, an Englishman who was not a Muslim. And before he became Muslim, he was in Germany doing his PhD. And this is a true story. And he had a dream where he saw the Prophet ﷺ before he was Muslim. And he said, In the deen and the light Islam. That the deen with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. He said he woke up the next morning and his whole room smelt like musk. And this is a true story. And then a year later he had a second dream, In the deen and the light Islam. And he went and he remembered this word, he couldn't forget it. And he asked an Arab what it meant. And he was told what it meant, and he became Muslim. So he had the smell of this mass, so he said to Zahir, وَلَكِنَّكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ لَسْتَ بِكَاسِدَ You're not with Allah, like kasid means some merchandise that won't go. It won't sell in the, in the marketplace. And he said, with Allah you sell very quickly. And Zahir was somebody, and then he used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zahirun badiyatuna wa nahnu hadiruhu. Zahir is our badiya, is our desert, and we're his city. And this was a simple man that nobody recognized, but Jibreel told the Prophet ﷺ who he was. But the point is, is that Muslims should not 
uh, be the, everybody outwardly be the same. That's not our deen. That's the deen of uh, this nihilistic culture that makes everybody look the same, and yet it's all contradictions and lies, you see. Because underneath they're the same. Internally Muslims are not the same. So this teaching that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we have, to go, we have to go back and return to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this first one is in following his sunnah. And the outward sunnah, there are many things to it. But we should not trivialize it and turn it into this uh, rigid code of looking uh, a certain way or uh, doing certain things. This is the trivialization of the sunnah. It's much deeper than that. And the ulama, the usuliyun are very clear about sunnah. And its, its place in Islam. And they're very clear about Sunnah al-Adat. The habits and characteristics of the Prophet. Which there's blessing in following them. And we should never make fun of anyone that follows them. The Sunnah, the, the Imama, according to the people of Sunnah and Jama'ah. If anybody laughs at the Imama, that it's kufr, buwah. Because yastahziu bi sunnati Rasulillah. He's making fun of the Sunnah of the Messenger. If anyone laughs at somebody who wears a short robe or something like that, that is istihza with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and it's muharram ijma'an by the agreement of all the scholars. These are noble things, the Prophet would not have done them if they weren't noble. Because he only did noble actions. So it's important to recognize that. And then he said the second thing in, 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 in the, the, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ said is an-nusratu ri dinihi giving victory to his deen. And al-ikram li qarabatihi is the second one. Is being kind and showing great compassion and love for his, his family. That we have to love the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Because they have a place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because his irada until yawm qiyamah is connected to purifying the house of the Prophet ﷺ. And so his family has a blessing. And even Ahmad Zarruq radiallahu said, if one of his family is Asi, that we nuqim al-had alayhi, ka ibni, ka annuhu, ka annana ibad, wa huwa ibnu Sayyidina, as if we're slaves trying to rectify the son of our master. In other words, we don't do it with impunity, we do it with love and compassion, like somebody who corrects a child. And then the last thing, that, the, that he said, Ahmed Zarruq radiallahu anhu, is giving nusra li dinihi. And this means, learning the deen, and taking it on to the next generation, and taking upon those uh, wadaif, and those things in our communities, that help the mu'mineen, that lessen their load, by taking on the fara'id al-kifaya, by learning the ulum al and these type of things. وَالشَّفَقَةُ ala ummatihi And loving his ummah. Shafaqa, this is shafaqa, compassion for the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. And we have to have compassion in this age. Though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ تَابُ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبِعُهُ فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَى That Allah has shown tawbah to the Prophet ﷺ. He has turned to the Prophet ﷺ and the muhajireen and the ansar, the people of hijrah, and this is till the end of time, and the people of the nusra. Kunu ansar lillah. Allah commands all of us to be ansar to Allah and His Messenger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who followed Him in the difficult hour, sa'at al-usra, in the difficult hour. This is the difficult time now that we're in. Not when everything's going easy. Not when everything's uh, secure. Not when the Muslims are having their futuhat and the ghana'im. And all of these things. No, when the mu'mineen are oppressed, when the mu'mineen are suffering, those people who then become muslihun, who then become people of this deen, those are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes tawbah upon. Those are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And those are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters them into his jannah by the shafa'ah of the Rasul. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى من والاه and those who follow him and give him wilaya and victory the last thing that I will say is that the success of this ummah 
without a doubt, is the rectification of the individual members that make up the ummah. And there is no other path out. And the re- rectification of this ummah will come with the following of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the only way, because Imam Marik anhu said, the last of this ummah will only be rectified by what the first of it was rectified, and the first of it was rectified by their love and their absolute following of the Messenger of Allah. And I'll leave two things with this. The first is that all of us have to recognize that those who have been put over us, wherever we are in the earth, are mirrors for us to reflect on our own internal actions. That every, and I can mention many countries, that every uh, Syrian has some portion of that beast that was put over them. Every Egyptian has some portion of that beast. Every Tunisian has some portion. Every, this is the reality. And until we purify the inside of these creatures, by following the Messenger of Allah, by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they won't disappear. They'll be there as a constant reminder for our own internal states. And this is the truth. And you can find it in the book of Allah by istiqra. If you just look at it with analysis and intelligence, you'll see that that is clear in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing is that by following the Messenger of Allah and recognizing who he is and what this deen is, and what this deen is, then we will become like that Sahabi ibn Hudayfa when he was captured with a group of mu'mineen that were fighting Rome. And they took him in the presence of the Roman ruler. And the Roman ruler said, Become a Muslim, become a Christian, Tanasar. Just become a Christian and I will give you a palace and I will give you my daughter in marriage. And he said, La wallahi. He's trying to trick him with the dunya. He says, La wallahi. I won't do it. The, the, he began to bring people in front of him from the mu'mineen and killing them. And he said, I won't go back, because he was the leader of the Muslims. He said, I won't go back on my deen. And then he brought a boiling cauldron and threw some of the Muslims in it. And he said, if you don't go back, I'm going to kill you and do what I've done to them. And he began to weep. And the Christian ruler said, what makes you weep? And he said, are you so afraid of death that you begin to weep like this? And he said, La Allah, I wish that I had a life for each hair on my body to die like this for my deen and for my prophet. And because of that, the Christian said, you're free and your people are free. And when Umar radiallahu anhu heard about this, قَبَّرَ رَأْسُهُ وَيَدُّهُ Umar, Because the Christian kissed his head when he saw that, the devotion to his deen, and recognized the truth that was in that man's heart, that he wouldn't back away. Umar kissed his head and kissed his hand like the Christian did and he said, Wallahi, that this man deserves to be kissed by every mu'min. And this is the deen of the Prophet ﷺ and this is the people that following this deen creates. Allahumma a'izzir islam wal muslimin waqta' adabir al-kafirin Allahumma akhlufna khulfan hasana Allahumma ya arham al-rahimin tub alayna Allahumma tub ala al-mu'minin fi hadhi sa'at al-usra اللهم أيد المجاهدين في كل مكان والحقن بهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحرمنا من ثوابهم اللهم سدد أقدامهم سدد رميهم وثبت أقدامهم وأفرغ عليهم صبرا من عندك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك قلت وقولك الحق إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم فرعالمين إنك حمد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتائه